what happens in, the, in this process of satsang, of real spiritual life, is not that you become absolutely high and never low again. You become perfectly identical to the stable constant, which is absolute bliss, prior to highs and lows, prior to God and devil, spirit and flesh, all these opposites. The true bliss of reality and real God becomes your realized nature. And the individual begins to observe in his own consciousness and in his life because the process of satsang does not simply work subjectively. It is not simply a revelation of your tendencies through feelings and thoughts and dreams and the, and the like. It is that, but also manifests outwardly, absolutely. It continually creates conditions in your life, just as it creates internal conditions. And what the individual begins to observe is that the cycle of high and low, the cycle itself doesn't go away, but the speed is changed. The speed becomes very rapid. I remember observing in my own case that I would go through this sort of depressed period once a month or whatever it was, feel pretty good for about once a month, the, uh, the opposite side of that, and then sort of in between there was this moving in and out of mediocrity. <laughs> but I began to observe as time went on that there was more, that this cycle began to occur much more quickly. So I'd be depressed every week and high every other week, and the period of mediocrity was a little narrower. And then I'd get depressed every couple of days and high every couple of days and the period of me mediocrity was that much smaller. Until I got to I was going high and low every other minute or so. Until the speed became so rapid I couldn't notice it anymore, it became absolute speed. The speed of light, faster than the speed of light. The divine speed. <laughs> And then there was no more of this confusion with qualities. The qualities could still be observed in others and in the secondary affair of my own functions. But the whole dilemma created by the dualities, which exist not only in the form of the solid stuff of the world, but in the very process of consciousness, ceased to be a dilemma at some point ceased to be what it appeared to be, ceased to be what it implied. And that's really the problem. We observe it and we assume something on the basis of it. We observe the dualities of life, we see that there's life and then there's death, and we assume what is implied by that, that mortality is what it's all about. And the same with these endless cycles of our own conscious existence. We assume so we assume what is implied in that observation. So when we go through this depressive cycle, which is the one we tend to get upset about, we assume what's implied by that. We assume something about our own selves, and we withdraw. We add to this simple quality that's arising in us, this separateness, this withdrawal. And so we aggravate these periods of depression by withdrawing from the guru, withdrawing from others turning away from the relational status of existence. Whereas if we lived satsang during that time and did not turn away from the relational condition of life, we would still feel this, the qualities of this lower phase. We would feel their influence in some way, but the humor would not vanish fundamentally. And so this depressive phase can be a can serve the ultimate event. It can be a purifying activity. Whereas the ordinary individual who is just moving with his own qualities never participates in the purifying activity. He only accumulates, only contributes to his attachment to this sine curve. And it never becomes illumination. It never becomes truth. He only compensates, performs the opposite 
equality. And the forms of traditional seeking and healing and whatever very much forms of reaction to this curve of high and low. There's attempts to attach an individual to the highs, to the positives, or to decondition him from the negatives. There are operations on these qualities themselves, whereas the truth is the only principle. The divine itself is the only principle. Satsang is the only means. Satsang is to live the condition of truth. Live with the guru in truth. And it permits this pattern to be undermined because it does not live this, the, this pattern as its principle. It lives satsang as the principle. And this falls apart by virtue of not being used, becomes obsolete. And changes occur then in this pattern. This is karma, this sine curve. This is what karma is. And changes occur in that pattern by virtue of living satsang, the constant. Not by virtue of doing something to the pattern itself, but by virtue of living the constant, this transformation occurs. Whereas the traditional principle is to do something to the qualities and find God somehow at the end. But you must find God at the beginning. And the qualities are transformed. Only by turning to God do you deserve to be relieved of your qualities. If you do not turn to God, then you have only resorted to your qualities. Your qualities. The you is one of those qualities. Me is a quality in consciousness. It is not you. It is not your condition. It is one of the assumptions, one of the reflections, one of the implications of the pattern of manifest existence. 